Well, we left off, and you see there on the on the top part. I just I didn't want to just jump right into uh, the the next two trumpets without just uh, we don't need to review a whole bunch. But remember, in one session we covered uh, the first trumpet and the second tr trumpet. One of the big parts about leading into the first two trumpets being sounded was what? Does anybody remember what an angel did before the trumpets started sounding? We talked about it last week. Don't fire. All right. Uh, gathered up. And, and, and by the way, some believe that, that, and then I saw another angel do that before that could have been Jesus himself. So some would translate or see that as Jesus himself. Uh, doesn't say that. And you'd have to wonder with John describing Christ in some of the previous verses. You know, one, he'd say like one like the Son of Man, who was the Son of Man kind of stuff. And then to describe him different in this case would be a little unusual. So I'm, I'm not going to... I'm not going to. Anyways, it's an angel or Jesus Himself. Anyways, took the uh, took what from the altar? Well, took took fire from incense was on there, and fire that was burning on the on the table, and added it to what? Prayer of the saints, and then did what with it? Threw it down to the earth. Before he did that, what what happened? Okay, the, the, the fragrance or the smoke of what was seen going up and exactly what happens in the temple and that kind of stuff. And so we have this that scene that kind of happened right before the tr sounding of the first trumpet. And it's very significant that it was kind of a pause like that. Uh, and that was right after the, the half an hour of silence, which I don't think I'll ever... It just almost gives me goosebumps thinking about that 30, uh, 30 minutes of, of silence and stuff. So we have that and then we have the first two trumpets. Uh, the, the, the first trumpet was uh, hail and fire, and we see the results of that. We get into that, the, the fraction of the third, 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 third. We'll keep hearing um, throughout that. But it's a third of the trees and the green grass was uh, burned up, or exactly what it says was a third of the trees and all of the green grass. But it's hard to just say whether it was all of the green grass within that third of an area or what. And what were the trees significant of? Or um, just leafy green trees or fruit? fruit. Uh, it was a reference to, a, could, it seems to be a reference to a fruit tree. So uh, actual food. In the uh, and, then, and then the big mountain come burning down. Uh, it was not a mountain. It was like a mountain. Probably was what? An asteroid or a meteor uh, hitting, hitting the earth. And it hit the sea, and what were the consequences? The results were a third, a third, and a third. <laughs> a third of the sea became blood. A third of the creatures died. Um, just still can't fathom. I mean, a third turning blood is, is kind of a strange thing to think about. But just think about a third of the entire uh, uh, water being, all the animals being, being dead. Yes? Uh, that's got to be a really bad situation when that third happened because I saw on the internet this the past week about the over in England where the they had a cold snap and all those creatures out of the ocean water had died. And that was that was just a little small, small area too, probably. I mean, a large amount, but yeah, imagine that happening over the whole face of the earth. A third is a lot more in there than the real. And, and not only the effects that come up on, on land, but the effects down in the water itself and everything, that's got to be devastating. And then the, uh, the, uh, the third of the ships that were destroyed, uh, more than likely was from that. You watch those pictures of the tsunamis that, that happened and stuff. Uh, it could have just been that from, from that uh, uh, thing that happened there, that the ships were destroyed along with all the people on them. And so we did the numbers game on how many thousands that could possibly be. I think we come up with 8,000-ish or something. So a lot, a lot of destruction. So that was just the first two trumpets being sounded. And that was basically a, 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 a natural type. This, was, this isn't just nature gone wild. It's not just natural things that do occur. We know these kinds of things occur. When you, when you see the fires and stuff in, in uh, is it Florida that they're having now, or California, California, wherever, and here in Oklahoma they're having as well. When you see those massive fires that break out and stuff, and you see the devastation that happens, and you see we hear of earthquakes, we see this, like you, Don was talking about, things that, that happen in nature that aren't natural. They're not, you know, they're not, they're out of the norm. 
And when you see that happening, that's not what this is. However, these are natural type events using things. Um, when, we, when we talk about nature, who created nature? <laughs> God created nature, and only God can manipulate it and use it however He wants. So, um, it, whether these are mixed in with some spiritual type thing or something like that or, or whatever, but just take it for what it's worth. It sounds like it's just a description of, of some natural things that happen on a massive scale, not because of time. You know, they say, well, you know, we're overdue for a, a hundred year flood or something. No, that's not what this is either. This is God doing this. God casting, you know, <coughs> creating this as a judgment on this. Right? Okay. Yes. They'll not only be talking about it, I imagine they'll be trying to, to wrap their, their head around what could cause this and why is this all happening at the same time when, you know, they got a book they could go read, you know. They could go to YouTube. If YouTube is still around. Uh-huh. Yeah. 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 We are our, our, our map right here, or our globe right here. So I, I meant to bring it last week and I did, so I brought it today just as a, a visual. When we're talking about a third of the earth, um, we're literally talking a third of the earth. We're not talking just kind of roundish numbers or something like that. When we think of the, the body of water uh, that covers the majority of our, our planet, and then you take a third of that that turns to blood, and the animals and all that kind of stuff, it's pretty... You know, it's unthinkable really about what's what's going on there and it doesn't change from where we're going so we got Trump number one two three and four are kind of, we're kind of going to follow along the same lines that's why it's kind of, well, yes. it, I don't think it will be as shocking to them because we have major areas of die-offs of animals even today where the you know whole Areas of birds just die, right. and the roads are just littered with them. And I think I it's a massive where they scale. Had this, uh, some kind of it looked like a ganu of some kind, and all of them, I mean, thousands and thousands and thousands of them had died right. at one time. And, and, and so I think they'll have a reason where they just don't right. believe. Be, well, they'll, they'll try to explain it away, too. Yeah, this is just nature's way of using evolutionary process. There's all kinds of things they'll try to come up to to get an answer uh, when the answer is right there before them. Right. I've seen out here at the lake, they, mm -hmm. they come in there and spray their chemicals right up here by the water. Uh -huh. And I've seen the fish die off about the after effect of, of a steep. Right. Oh, it's a, Unbelievable. It's a on a small scale, so you can yeah, imagine on a huge scale. If you have one one whale come up on the beach or something like that, and just you know massive flesh out there, and it's, uh, it's going to be incredible, and, and it's going it, to. It not only is it going to get their attention, it's meant to get their attention. All right, we'll see that as we go into tonight's stuff. This is intended not just as judgment, but this portion of it is judgment to get their attention as well. All right, we talked about that counting to three kind of thing, you know. So so far, God's counting to two, and we'll see what happens when He gets to four. Yeah. Well, and the Egyptians <coughs> didn't learn. Right. They didn't learn anything, even yeah. though God was showing them the, then. The hard heartedness of man, yeah. the stubbornness of man, is it becomes very <laughs> apparent that when you don't want to believe. Well, and, and we uh, have science believe. now. Everything yeah. is, oh, well, we can yeah. fix and if, it. And science. if science won't give us the answer, then we can go to, it's aliens, it's, right. you know, some <laughs> other kind of thing. And literally, I mean, <laughs> the rapture will, yeah, there'll already, be, there'll already be something that's happening on our planet with the rapture. And so people, at this point, we're just, uh, what we're just two years into it. And they're still trying to say, well, you remember that thing that started just out of the blue, okay? Now these go in succession. I mean, there's just like one after the other. After, I mean, it's just constant stuff. Whereas that catches everybody off guard. Just in a twinkling of an eye for, for millions to be gone. There'll still be those dealing with that. They'll, they'll say aliens, and so now the aliens are attacking our, our wildlife and our trees and all that. Some people just say, you're right, we didn't like those Christians. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <Yeah. laughs> But some, some and many will say this is the hand of God. Uh, and remember we've had that point already. It was uh, uh, seal number whatever, five or six or something, where, where the people heard and recognized and saw 
this is the this is the judgment of God, and it was the world saying it at that point. All right. Oh yeah, that's true. Okay, back row. Settle down. <laughs> <laughs> Not naming names, but okay, here we go. All right, so we get now to uh, we we after after that takes place, he goes right in, and remember those are just boom, boom, short verses. This happens, and and it keeps going. Um, then we get into uh, number three. I, I don't want to forget to say this, so let me remind you before we get into this that we're already dealing with the first four. Uh, seals that were broken. The land has already been in a drought, right? Remember, famine struck the land. That was the fourth or third, third or fourth horseman, and, uh, and 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 war has already been waged. And so there's already been so much chaos and devastation just going uh, for the first part of what's taken place in the midst of trying to create a peace on. A, a false sense of peace, and then all that falling to apart as well. And then this kind of stuff starts happening, and, and boom, a third of this and a third of that, and it's not going to let up at all. So, uh, verse uh, chapter 8, verse 10 and 11, two verses is all we get to, to hear about this uh, third trumpet being sounded. Who'd like to uh, who'd like to read that? All right, uh, Gene, read, uh, I guess, read both of them. Third and, 12 and 13? No, read 10 and 11, yeah. The third angel sounded his trumpet, and a great star, blazing like a torch, fell from the sky on a third of the rivers and on the springs of water. The name of the star is Wormwood. A third of the waters turned bitter, and many people died from the water and that had become bitter. It had been become bitter. All right. So, third, just like the other two started, the first is the sound. Uh, we were talking earlier about whether or not the earth they're hearing the sound on earth or not. I don't know that we can figure that out. Maybe we have. We know that they understand some of this, what's going on down on earth, while some of it is only uh, they're privy to it up in heaven around the throne. And so it doesn't always give us the, the clear distinction of what is seen and heard from the earth or what's seen and heard from heaven to the earth and all that. So John's getting a glimpse of all this. But I'm not quite sure how it plays out there. Although, remember, these are trumpets not to announce good news. <laughs> uh, and they're not the trumpet to go to war, but it's trumpet annou announcing judgment. And so if you're going to war, you're gonna, they're coming to get you. They're going to sound the, uh, the charge, and, and there we go. So that's more like what it is, so it would make more sense. Whether it's the trumpet sound they hear, or just these thundering voices, noise, rumbling, and the, the skies like thunder and all that kind of stuff, it's getting their attention. Something's happening before. So each one it says, it's sounded. So the sounding of the trumpet is significant. And then it says, and followed by that. So there's something significant with this sound, this warning, this announcement kind of thing, and then the, act, the activity that follows. In this case, it's a great star. Are you fill in your blank? This is a great star that fell from heaven. Have stars fallen from heaven before? Yes. Okay. So that's, a, a, again, a natural thing. Is this just like all the other stars that are falling? No. So this is what has happened, what can happen. By the way, if you want to listen to all the evolutionists and stuff, they can say, oh, this has happened millions of times in the gazillion years the planet has been alive and whatever kind of stuff. You can turn the water yeah. than the stars. Right, exactly. So, uh, but in, in record time, we've always there's always been stars that have fallen, meteorites have come close, and uh, those kind of things. This is different, again, because those would be uh, kind of natural events, um, and in some sense, like, ooh, oh, cool, awesome, you know, let's take pictures of it. Mark be out there taking pictures of it. You won't get pictures of this, all right? But uh, but this is this is significant. It's it's huge, and it's it, it is a falling star, though. It's described as that. No reason to think it's anything else. Yes, it could be that he saw a nuclear thing coming, you know, bomb over here. But it doesn't appear to be that type of thing. It appears to be more like a, a meteor, or, uh, asteroid, or something. Well, actually, a, a meteor and a star are two different things. A star is like a sun, like our sun, mm -hmm. and a meteor isn't flaming. And it's only just debris only if like it hits our atmosphere. But a star is flaming even out in space okay. without oxygen or anything. It's still a fireball. <coughs> So whatever's falling from, from the sky, again, it could be just a natural thing right there, it could be something else, but we'll just take it for what it says. It's just a star that comes 
uh, comes from uh, from the sky, <clears throat> and it is it's burning like a lamp. So again, remember when it says light, just like the the fall, the, the flaming mountain that has already fallen was like a mountain, but it wasn't. It'd be again an asteroid or something like that. Not to explain it away, but to, in a description we just have that. And it says light, so it, 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 Paul describes it. It's said to be like that without any distinction. Doesn't doesn't change the result, and we don't have to know exactly what it is to. It doesn't tell us anything more. It's judgment coming from the skies. Except we know it's intentional. Yes? What do you think the significance of the third is? That's a great question. I don't know. It's just obvious that it keeps talking about a third. It's like a... It, it almost comes across to me as though it's a... It, it's like God not totally destroying. You know when He destroyed uh, the earth in, in Noah's day? It was complete. Other than that one family He pulled out of there. Uh, it was a complete destruction of everything else. And, uh, and in the end, there'll be a complete uh, destruction as well, and a new heaven and new earth and everything. Um, the old will be done away with. But here, it's like it's intentional to, 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 for mass conflict or uh, uh, conflict of results of happening without destroying everything and everyone. But again, it's, it's so massive that it's, it's amazing. And again, yes. Did God say when he knew that there'd never be, he would never again, never destroy it? The, 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 yeah, the, the rainbow was, the, God clearly says God's promise is never to destroy the earth by flood, the entire earth by flood. Not that there wouldn't be a destruction of the earth. So, Yes, Bobby? If, if I were in there, if I were there, when right. we were halfway through, and I seen a third destroyed, yeah. If I made that, I got one one more lucky break. Right. Because I wasn't in that third. I wasn't in that third. So now I said, Can't dude, you better get your act together because your chances are running out. And you would think that it doesn't happen yeah. that way. Donnie and Dan, yes. To me, the significance of the one third is that this isn't going to be an immediate destruction. This is going to be, this is going to, you're going to be punished. Time and time and time and time again. Yes. It's not going to be over to You're going right. to suffer through all of it. And, and that's one thing we can see about this is that we know that, that it's all it's all been mapped out. This isn't a guessing guessing game. We're not taking all kinds of scriptures from all over and coming up with some mathematician stuff like people do when they're trying to figure out the code, you know, and trying to figure out when the Lord's going to come back and calendaring and stuff like that. It's not that. This is mapped out. This is so boom, 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 clearly stated. Uh, it's going to happen that way, and so it, it, yeah, it, it, part of the reason it's the third is because it's not all of them, because that's not till till the Battle of Armageddon it comes that we see more of a, a massive total destruction happening. Uh, Dan, you have to raise your hand. I just want to clarify and go back to the star. Yes. Are you are you implying that it's going to hit the Earth? Yes, it hits the yes. water. Yes. So I mean, where does it say that though? Is it says it so when it fell, that's when it, a third of everything was wiped. In chapter yeah. verse, verse ten. So it fell on the third river. Right. Right. Fell from the sky on the third of the river, so it affects the the uh, the, the water. Okay. Now the mountain fell into the sea. Okay, that one the in the, the one before um, so the, the second trumpet. Where was that at? Oh, where did the mountain fall into the sea? At? Right. It it didn't say. Where pick it pick it anywhere. All right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. And the effect of right. So this this is the fresh water though. It, it lands and, and affects the, the fresh water. Yes. Okay, Wanda was uh, was talking about the uh, reference to the word wormwood, which is, is clearly what it says, and it is it is a it's a there's a great word for that, and there's also a word um <clears throat> down somewhere it was right there hemlock which is a, which is a poison yes there's an herb that's bitter and then there's a there's a poison either way and so bitterness poison all that kind of stuff we know it's it's not just taste bitter but it is poisonous because it kills and so that is the the word that's used that's what the worm wormwood word means and and, that, and that's the star is named that because of the effects also that Chernobyl in, in Russia uh -huh. Chernobyl 
that's another word for wormwood. I've heard that before, and I think they named it. seemed like they named an asteroid there one time or something like that. So that's just a name that was given to it. You asked the Greek word? It is asphenthos. Well, what I'm saying is, what are you talking about? herb? Yeah, it's, it's an herb and a poison. It's, it's describing something that's bitter and that is poisonous. <coughs> Dawn. Is it possible that uh, in some of what we're reading the time where we do an explanation like this is from his viewpoint in this day and age, seeing right. things that are in the future that he has never seen before. Right. Exactly what they are. Yeah, well, yeah, he's trying to put a description to something he could not describe other than with natural things. Yeah, so there's no way. We, we've seen the news. Some of y'all may have seen it in person, but seen a missile coming through the sky, you know. Um, if you didn't even have a concept of what a missile, you would be describing a, a star falling from the sky that's blazing. And so uh, it would look natural as best. When we start getting into the scorpion type things that are released from the pit and kind of stuff like that is where you can we'll get into some more of that discussion that's where because some want to some want to just say this is symbolism it's just you know whatever uh it, it, it's hard to differentiate sometimes i don't believe any of what's happening is symbolic that it's just generally speaking there'll be tough times or nature will have a hiccup here and there or something like that these are actual events and so whether it is again a, a actual star or he's describing this thing as falling it could be there are places where you could see the atomic bomb um, or, or nuclear bombs and the result of that that is it would be fit the same description could god use an actual star could he use a nuclear bomb could he create something that is neither one of those but John sees it. Yeah. So it could be an existing star, or he could have created a star just for that. Uh, he could have used the bombs. One thing, I was watching one thing, and he said, you know, all the nuclear bombs that are uh, in the world that the countries have, I, I could have get, gotten the number there, but uh, eight, nine, ten countries, or whatever, that possess the nuclear bombs, never have they created a weapon that's not been used. And so all these weapons that are there, the thought that they would be unused till the end is a little bit hard to, to imagine. When you feel threatened, what do you do? You, you, your back is against the wall, you're going to use whatever. This thing's coming at us, that obviously the rocket man finally got one through. And so, you know, <laughs> the, the talks didn't go well with Trump and, and here comes Wormwood, you know. And so we got to fight back. So you launch theirs, we've got to do preemptive. And so you just see how quick all that can turn into some mass chaos. Now, you don't see that in this as far as we're not playing a chess game. God doesn't do something and then we do something. And God does something and then we react. No. This is just all coming down on man. And it's the reaction of the thought, the panic. It's just sheer panic and stuff. And then we, we kind of said it earlier, but we didn't get there. Some will absolutely refuse to believe anything other than what science or what the politicians, the political, or the leaders, the Antichrist will tell them. Others will know it's God and they'll be part, of, they'll end up being part of that great multitude of martyrs that we've heard about. They'll see this and they'll go, ah, oh, there's no other explanation. This is the judgment of God. And I think they'll even say, and we sure deserve it. <laughs> but uh, they place their faith in Christ and they. Somebody, somebody, and they somebody said, Uncle Joe tried to tell me about this. And That's I right. Listen. And I wouldn't listen. All right, so it does say then in the second part of, of verse 11 uh, that many people die from drinking the water. I forgot my little, other than this illustration, I was going to just sit a glass of water right here. <laughs> you know, um, the thought of, of the, a third of the water, of fresh water. So the mountain is in the ocean. This is on fresh water, the water that we drink. I mean, what's what, when when uh, when a tornado goes through or something like that? One of the first thing you do is get fresh water. You know, because you know how quick water can be uh, polluted and, and all that kind of stuff. And so we kind of have to have water, don't we? How long are you going to make it without water, without fresh water to drink? Yeah. And how long are the effects of these things going to be seen? When it said a third of the trees were destroyed, do they pop back up the next year? Those trees took years and years, sometimes decades, to grow, produce fruit, and they're gone, and they're going to be staying up. And then we got, yeah, we only got three years, and we know that that 
But what I'm saying is, this isn't something where they call in, call in FEMA, and FEMA gets it right, and they just bring water, and it, whew, it's a good thing we had a stockpile of water. And so a third of the fresh water destroyed. It, I, I find it interesting that it doesn't give a number here. It doesn't say a third uh, yet. It just says, it, according to this, that many die because well, of drinking the water. And the water is not the only thing uh, drinking it. You have to have it Animals, with. the livestock, and, and do what? You have to have it with. Yeah, so it, the effects are incredible. I was <clears throat> talking to an engineer out here for the city of Tulsa, their water treatment plant. Uh -huh. He said 20 years ago when he took office, it took four chemicals to purify the water. He said two years ago, he told me this, and he said then it took 17. Wow. All the stuff that's in the water. And and without that purified water, we're in trouble. So to say that God's not going to take the bottom of water that we have. <laughs> a third of that means that's, that's right. Although it'll be used up, and we need, you got to get fresh water from somewhere. You can't produce water. So, raise your hand. When we were in Russia, we were there in Mexico. Uh huh. And it had been shut down. And the thing was over a third of those people there that have cancer. Because of that, yeah. So you have to realize the effects of that. Now, the, the, the big difference there is that this isn't over years and years and years of exposure or something. This is instantaneous. And this bitter water, poisonous water, happens on the hills of what's already famine and drought and devastation and death and war and all that kind of stuff. All right, let's get on. We're not going to eat or nothing. All right, we got to get we got to get another trumpet blown. Uh, by the way, Tim LaHaye, which we, we the Left Behind series and stuff, you'll hear me quote a lot of his stuff, but uh, he says the desperation of mankind, just on what we've talked about, hold on to this when we talk further down the line, even at this point, the desperation of mankind will be unbelievable. We can't, un we, you can't believe that. Last night I was looking through the channels, I came across a movie, and I thought, I think I've seen it, I think I have it, it's Matt Damon, and it was about the, one of these viruses, that the epidemic, or what? Contagion is what the name of it. Pretty good movie, no, not bad parts or whatever, but it was just the human nature part. If you just watched it from the respect of, of how people react in times of, of crisis, which this has always been <laughs> times of crisis, and, and then this stuff happening like this. One saying was they were trying to get this antivirus, and then they had people lined up, and they're all patient until they found out they're only going to get 50, and then everybody else was. And they just rushed the thing, broke the windows, attacked the pharmacy. You know, I've got to get mine. And that's that human nature, that, that uh, the trying to survive kind of stuff. It's just an ugly, ugly, horrible scene. Not only what takes place, but then what takes place as a result of what uh, of this. So, yeah, uh, people that water, you know, don't have water. Again, we talk about people surviving through the uh, tribulation. Again, we're just two years into it, two and a half. We've got a long road to go. And the things that have already happened, the consequences are going to continue on top of what else is going to happen. So we get to trumpet number four, uh, verse 12 and 13. Once again, we get two verses, and that's all we get, but we can talk it out. So let's talk out verse uh, or trumpet number four, two, 12 and 13. We'd like that. All right. Uh, Donnie? The fourth angel sounded his trumpet, and a third of the sun was struck, a third of the moon, and a third of the stars so that a third of them turned dark. A third of the day was without light, and also a third of the night. As I watched, I heard an eagle that was flying in midair call out in a loud voice, Lo, 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 to the inhabitants of the earth, because of the trumpet's blast, <coughs> because of the trumpet's blast about to be sounded by the other three angels. All right. Before we, we're going to back up, and I want to talk out here, but you heard him in his translation, it said, an eagle sounded the woes. Did anybody say angel? Most of them probably said angel. So we'll talk about that in a minute. All right. But let's go back to, to what happens here. Again, the fourth sound. So in the midst of this water crisis and, and, and people dying, uh, that sound happens again. If, if they, in fact, they hear it. That sound happens again, and all of a sudden things go at least partially dark. dark. Um, I meant to kind of look around because I don't know that I've heard a description. Um, if anybody knows or can find out, tell us, all right? And I'll try to maybe check it out again. Just like the other things that they don't recover from, 
Is this a third of the day, a third of the light of the sun, and a third of the light of the moon for the rest of the tribulation period? This isn't doesn't just last a day. This is not just like the day that the sun stood still or the, the darkness that happened when Jesus was on the cross or something. This is a, a again an effect on natural bodies, the sun and the moon. Nothing symbolic about the sun or the moon here. It's the sun. <laughs> How strategic is the sun in our survival? And the effects of just prolonged darkness, overexposure too. We had that overexposure uh, described in some of the martyrs. You'll never again burn up by the sun. Well, here we have the opposite effect, and we have we have some darkness. Darkness is scary. <laughs> A little bit of it, if you expect it, whatever is one thing. But when it's the kind that affects plant life, how many times is the plant life going to be affected? We got the grass, we've got the trees. They have to have water as well. I don't know if poison affects all plants like it does us, but I mean, it's just all these assaults on, on, the, on nature and the effects that it has on, on us. And now we have darkness on already strained planet. You see how desperate we're getting, and these aren't even the worst of the worst. So, your answer is darkness. is followed by partial darkness. A third of the day. There's our number again. A third of the day, and the result was the third of the sun, the moons and the stars were smitten by, uh, by this event. Um, Tim LaHaye again, he says, uh, this will have a devastating effect on crops, food supplies, even lifestyles. I mean, if you, you know, if you can't get it out, whatever, it's just, it's, it changes life. The hardship may contribute to many calling. I hope this is true. Uh, and it, we have indication it is. Many calling on the name of the Lord. And so that description of the martyrs we had in chapter 7, verse 9, uh, part of that will be the result of this. It, it's just overwhelming. It, it's hopeless. There's no man, the Antichrist himself, there's no man, there's no country, there's no organization that's going to promise relief from this. We know at the beginning, just about every one of those trumpets, God was doing that for the Yes, and that's where we come at the end of this, all right? So we get to the end of this and we, we have... These warnings that are, are are shots, you know, they're five. They're warning shots. I mean, they're, they're uh, they have their effect and everything. But the worst is not yet to come, and before it comes, even before the trumpets started sounding, the seals were warnings. All right, so many convert right up front. Some convert right up front. Then the, the de then the actual judgment, those kind of things that happen um, uh, as directly coming from the hand of God and God's judgment and wrath begin to happen. And while some still will shake their fist at, at God or still refuse to believe, many will uh, will actually turn to God. Remember also at this point, because we had 144,000 sealed, we have 144,000 plus <laughs> witnesses that are explaining to the world this is all in God's plan. This is all in Scripture. And so will what follows after that and follows after that. And they will have revelation. And they, the, the Jews that wouldn't even read the New Testament uh, will, will be scholars of the New Testament. I'm, I'm making that part up. I don't know. But I'm, they'll, they'll know and they'll understand. And they'll be telling people this was all written and we refuse to hear it as well. And we understand. What happened was written thousands of years ago. What's happening now is right here. Guess what's going to happen next? They say it. It'll happen. It lends to that witness of you better listen. These people are not missing a bit. They're not just guessing. They're not whatever. They're getting this directly from, uh, from the Word of God. And it's happening that way. So, they're going to have that. And yet, and yet we have the woes that are coming. Before we get to the woes, let's, let's look at what was just described. Now let's go back from the uh, pack before John was on the Isle of Patmos, when John was uh, was walking with Jesus and his his apostles before he, before the cross. And uh, let's go back to Luke chapter twenty one. Somebody turn there. Luke chapter twenty one and listen to Jesus and what he describes in his relevant discourse. Verse, uh, verse 25 to 28. I gave you that reference there, but you need to write that out and you're filling the blank. Luke 21, verses 25 to 28. Luke chapter 21, verses 25 to 28. Who'd like to read that? Someone in the back. We've got all front read. Someone from the back want to read forward this way? Sheila, you got it? All right. 
verses 25 through 28. And this is Jesus talking to his disciples, talking about when he when the Son of Man will return and what's some of the things that are going to happen that'll just kind of prove his return is near. Let's listen. There will be signs in the sun, moon, and stars. On the earth, nations will be in anguish and perplexity at the roaring and tossing of the sea. Men will faint from terror, apprehension of what is coming on the world, for the heavenly bodies will be shaken. At that time, they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. When these things begin to take place, stand up and lift up your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. Okay. Now, we can take a lot of... You need to hold on to that scripture and kind of bounce back and forth and don't, don't think, wait a minute, that says something that sounds like not a contradiction, but it's a little different time frame. Remember at that point when Jesus was talking about that, He was talking about some... He was giving a, 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 a picture from a little bit further away. Uh, he's not describing what John is, is seeing here in sequence. He's not saying, then I saw this, and then I saw that, and then I heard this, and then this happened, and then an angel. He's not giving that kind of description. So it, it almost kind of just sums up kind of what's happening on these, these, uh, this portion of the, of the tribulation. And what did he describe? The, the sky is falling, you know, and the water shaking, and, and, and all that kind of stuff. The darkness and the, and the reaction of mankind of this they're 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 dying of fear. I mean, they're just fainting. It's just overwhelming. And Jesus described that to a T of what we're describing here. And he says, and then they saw the Son of Man coming back. So you almost think, oh, he's about to return. Well, if three and a half years, four years from this point is is about to, yeah. In perspective of two thousand years since he was here, that's right before his return. So we've still got a lot of Bible studies to get there, <laughs> but in reality, we know exactly how long it was before men saw this, and right on the horizon of that will be the coming of the Son of Man at the end of the tribulation. So it's not seven years, it's really 70 or anything like that. This is literally seven years. And so we know where we're at this point, we're seeing these things, and then all of a sudden, uh, the, the return of Christ is near. And once again, that will be what, uh, what the nation of Israel will be telling people. The Son is coming back. And this is judgment from Him. And so, alright. So, we've got this. Christ already described this. People didn't listen to Him either. Because <laughs> they didn't know if a month after He left 2,000 years ago, He might return and they would be facing this kind of stuff. <coughs> would, the, would those that heard Jesus say that think, this is what my grandchildren are going to have to say. I may not live long enough, but my kids may have to, or my grandkids. Well, maybe not that, but I'm just coming soon. And they lived with that kind of expectation, but they didn't see this these signs. But Jesus said, this will happen before I come back. And the fact that it hasn't happened in this scale, in this way, tells us. You know, all those people that came and said their Messiah returned and stuff like that, the Jim Jones of the world or whatever, no, no clue. It's, it's not this. All right. All right. Then we get to the three woes. We got ten minutes to go. Whoa, whoa, whoa! All right. Whoa, whoa, whoa! We um, uh, the 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 verse thirteen are the three woes. As you're filling the blank there, we we kid um, uh, my grandson Michael because th th two or three years ago we begin to see how different he was than Paul. Paul hits life running. I mean, he just climb, go, do, jump, you know, bounce off, get cut, whatever. Just whew, at least he did when he was real young. He's kind of laid back now. Michael just took this approach, and we saw him one time, and he was, what was it, a steep hill or something like that? And instead of just bouncing, going, and whatever, he thought, he was, he was like, whoa, whoa, and he literally did that. He was, whoa, whoa, so I thought I hear, whoa, 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 he said, Michael, whoa, you know, I'm about to fall, I'm about to fall. Now, I wish it was something like that. It's not. This is, this is a serious, serious thing. Amazing that in the midst of trumpet one, just a quick description of what happens, devastation, trumpet two, quick description and sound, and then devastation three, devastation four, devastation is just going along like that, and all of a sudden it's like again, we keep getting these places where it kind of stalls out, where things stop, and there's an intentional thing that takes place in this verse 13 that reminds us that what has taken place again. Though it was judgment and had devastating consequences, it's still a warning of what's yet to come because that's the real thing that's, that's coming. The great 
tribulation, the, the all-out assault tra uh, tragedy that's coming. Can't imagine. It's all, if you didn't have never heard about what we're going to read in the weeks to come, if you never read past this, you would think this right here just described the end of humanity as we know it. It, there's a, it seems like there's enough here, and yet it's not. And so the, the angel, in some translations, some say evil. Well, you don't think of uh, you don't think of an angel flying like a bird, and yet we've had the description of the um, the cherubim with one with the face of an eagle, and so it could be that it could be an eagle, it could be an angel. So uh, whatever translation, it's something, someone, some creature sent by God flying in the air. Now again, I go to my globe because I, I don't, I can't. I can't wrap my hand, my mind around exactly how this happens. I can see a falling mountain hitting the ocean. I can see a star falling and, and affecting the waters. I can get all that. I can hear a trumpet and imagine the sound being heard everywhere. But how an angel or an eagle or whatever can fly around this globe and warn is beyond what I can kind of understand. So I just have to accept, although it really gives you a picture, yes, Tyler. Would it be possible that if all these one thirds hitting everywhere in the earth, that maybe it's pushing all the people together in one spot? It could be. It could be, although that we certainly wouldn't be on the same continent. So you almost get have a global picture of, of what's taking place. Um, when Christ returns, where does he set his foot down? Israel. So he comes to the temple. Okay, so we know where Christ is going to return. So we don't have to say he's. He's not going to come and land on the both sides of the planet. We know exactly where he touches down. And yet, um, everyone sees the Son of Man returning. And so there's there's some descriptions there. But then I, then I just have to stop a minute and realize, how big is God? <laughs> you know, that in his mind, he could think to create something that we see as so massive and intricate that to him is just the thought that he just spoke into existence along with the whole of space and the heavens and everything, um, God is big enough to send an angel big enough to circle the you know, the speed of light or whatever to where it can be seen. Um, I could fall back to the old technology. Yeah, all the cameras are on, and therefore everybody can see what's happening right here, even if you're on this side because of television. Um, I have to wonder if some of that happens with the image of the beast, which we'll get to before too long. Yeah. But nonetheless, that could be part of it. But I know it, it's possible for God to literally send an angel. But So forget the how and just look at the what. What does He do? He says, whoa, whoa, whoa. And that's not just a repeat. It's literally giving three warnings, three woes for what is about to come. That's exactly what the angel or the eagle or whatever will will be saying. Like if now we get to a bit more to that camp down to three, two, one. However, the the warning, you know, as a parent, and go back and keep using that illustration, you better stop or you're gonna get a spanking. That's a warning before you in hopes that you don't have to do that, alright? What we've seen already there was warnings. There's warnings in our world right now. That kind of thing. He said, telling people today, Tyler and I and Lynn are going to go to Zambia and we're going to tell people, the, you know, the Lord's coming back and I don't know what message we'll get, but you know, we want, we want people to know that they need to be saved today. Why? Because God's warning us His return for the church is very soon. So we already had that warning of a, of a parent to say, <laughs> accept and be a part of the rapture. Those that don't heed that warning have consequences to pay. But we've seen so far every step of the way, and with the horsemen coming and all that stuff, he's still trying to get people in the world to repent and return to <coughs> The majority don't, but many do. Okay, so whoa, whoa, whoa. That's our next, that's our Bible studies to come. All right. He says, woe because of the three angels, which are the three trumpets left to sound. We've had one, two, three, four. We've got the three trumpets left. And for those seven trumpets that will sound, it's the final three that they're, he's giving extra warning to. This, these first four were 
natural in design attack on on the, the climate, on the planet, and the effects on man. Well, we'll start studying next week and the week after that. We'll see demonic activity that's not coming from angels. We'll see things that are, are uh, much different in nature and much worse. And yet they have the warning. All right? Uh, you've heard of nuclear winters and things like that described even. There's things that are happening right now on the planet at, the, at that time will be happening on the planet. They'll try to come up with, with reasons but they're going to run out of saying that. It's just, you know, it's just going to be devastating. So what's about to happen is worse than what has taken place. Much worse than what's taken place. And woe number one and two, as horrible as they are, doesn't even compare to the last trumpet. And what is the last trumpet? What? Thank you. All right. The last trumpet are the bold judgments which happen after the mid-tribulation period. So the next two woes are going to happen before, the, before the, uh, the, the middle of the tribulation. So we're not quite there. We're just getting close, all right? So we'll go home and you do your research that starting at 9-11. It looks like 9-11 on why it's not. It's 9, chapter, chapter 9, verse 1 through 11, and you'll have trumpet number Number five. All right. We got one minute. Any question has to be asked. Read it. Yeah. I was wondering, like, on the third, third, third. Yes. That means the entire world will be affected. Is that, yeah. But do you think it's a literal third, 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 or is it a third spread out equally around the third? Yeah. This, this is an equal uh, soul, uh, not a soul, but this is a judgment on the world. It's like the flood in Noah's day. It wasn't a local flooding. We know what a local flooding would be just as de deadly and devastating in that local area. But that was a flood over the entire planet. So it was God's ju judgment on the planet and all of mankind. This is God's judgment on the entire planet, every nation, all of mankind simultaneously. So it's got to be seen as a third of the entire planet. Uh, and I would say, yeah, I would say it's, it's even. It's, there's, got, there's got to be, in God, God's mind, there's got to be something more. Why not a third and a fourth and, a, and an eighth and a tenth? Or, you know, why not just a bunch and a lot? No, it's, but God seems to do things that way when He, when he creates. Why create the world, the world in seven days and say, I did this on day one, this on day two? Because He is a God of, of order and all that, even in this kind of stuff. So I'd say, take it for what it says, a third of the entire planet. So it won't be one place devastated totally and others untouched. That, that just wouldn't make any sense, would it? So. Any other questions? All right. If I go to work on those uh, final two, those two weeks I'm gone, does that sound okay? If y'all do discussion, will you show up and do your discussion? <laughs> be good. And I'll test you on it when I get back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, Dan volunteered to just teach it. Get it. My notes are in my head, so we'll have to spend a lot of time uh, together between now and then so I can impart to you. All right. Good deal. Well, thank you so much for listening. Let's pray for uh, uh, Clifford as we close and uh, his, his um, friend, uh, friend and stuff. So uh, others still need lots of prayers and stuff, so continue to lift one another up. This is all just urgent. It's just urgent. This is real stuff. Yes, Wanda. Um. Today, Ron, one of Ron's employees' daughter was going home. Mm -hmm. A car came the wrong way, hit her head on. Head on. Um, yeah, and she managed to crawl out of the car, but wow. she's got a lot of damage to herself. And then two other cars hit her car. Oh my goodness. Wow, and that's here in Tulsa? Yeah. yeah. Wow. Okay. What's her name? Up around Oklahoma City, I think. Oh, was it? Okay. It's one of Ron's employee's daughter. Yeah. Okay. What's her name? Just first name? I don't. I don't know, okay. I don't know her okay. name. I've heard it, but I don't, can't remember it. Okay. Well, God knows that family and what they need. Everything God will send the right people around to minister in that situation. All right. Joe Aslan, would you dismiss us in prayer and pray for Clifford, and his friend, and then Ron's this daughter of one of Ron's employees this week? This week. Father oh, God, again, we thank you for the opportunity to attend your house to study your word. We thank you for the blessing of Jesus and the information you provide to us each Sunday night in this study. And we ask that you can show us.
share with others, and he knows we won't share anything we ask him. Plus, uh, Brother Clifford Knight and the family he's with, his friends, and he told me here, Lord, we'll just lift them up, take care of that situation. And, and the, the, uh, the point of uh, Ron Smith, just bless that family, you know, their situation, Lord, and actually really, everyone this week, and bless all of us. And, 